Hello there, welcome to Rico's Garage. Here with another wiring tech tip for you. You guys seem to enjoy these. And I got my third grade artwork to illustrate it. Now, what we're gonna focus on today is wiring the fuel shutoff solenoid for the P-Pump 12 valve Cummins. Several other mechanical diesels use a setup similar to this, but for now I'm just gonna focus on the 12 valve Cummins. But like I said, if you have another application, check it because it may work the same way. I ran into a couple other diesel engines that use this. Like I said, how Dodge and Cummins work shutting off the fuel on the P7100 pump on the 12 valve is they use an electric solenoid. Now the electric solenoid has a plunger that is spring pressure down and then magnetic pull up. There's a lever on the P-Pump that I don't have in the illustration. When the lever is down, that shuts the fuel off. When the lever is up, that turns the fuel on. That is how they control shutting the engine off. Like I told you before, a diesel engine needs fuel, air, and something to turn it over. The easiest way to shut it off is to shut the fuel off. So, we need to get this engine running and to do so, we need to have this solenoid to pull up and stay up. It does that using two different circuits. We have a high amp circuit, which has a larger magnet to physically pull past the spring pressure, pull this plunger up. Then, to keep it in place, it uses a smaller magnet that takes a lower current feed to hold it in place. That's why we have the pull wire and the hold wire. To wire this up is relatively simple. What we need is a four prong 40 amp relay that you can get at any parts store. And I've numbered the terminals here to see. How we wire this up, starting at the battery, we're gonna do the pull inside first. The pull inside takes a large amount of current, so you wanna wire it directly to the battery. So we'll come off the positive of the battery with a 10 or 12 gauge wire. You wanna use something pretty substantial. Come off of here, go to a 30 amp fuse, and then go to terminal number 30 on the relay. Across from that will be terminal 87, that you will go to the middle terminal on your fuel shutoff connector. We use marked it red for illustration purposes. Your colors may vary depending on if it's a factory solenoid or an aftermarket. I've seen them with several different combinations. Then, on terminal 86, we go straight to a chassis ground. Terminal number 85, we're going to come off with a wire and go to the S terminal on our starter solenoid. That will give this relay power when you have the key to the start position while the engine is cranking. While the engine's cranking, it's going to power up this coil, which will pull down the magnetic switch in the relay and put power, high current, to that fuel shutoff solenoid and draw that plunger up. Once that plunger's in place, it's going to need something on that keeper magnet to keep it in place. So that's where we run a wire straight to 12 volt ignition hot. Make sure it is hot in run and start. I'll explain that here in a minute. And put a 10 amp fuse in, in line there. That will keep that solenoid plunger pulled up with the keeper magnet as long as the key is in the ignition position. Now, what I said earlier, make sure that that wire is hot in both run and start. That's when the ignition key is in the run position and when it's in the cranking position. Some of your older cars did not have power to the ignition side of the fuse box while cranking. So you may have to get a little creative there and uh, if you're dealing with something older to get around that case of our square body it the wire we are using does have power run in start and that's pretty much it a couple fuses a relay and some good grounds you're good to go we were able to use we had a donor truck naturally so we kept the uh, the fuel shutoff connector right there so if we ever have to replace the fuel shutoff it plugs and unplugs just like OEM I even used the factory relay from the donor truck for that uh, fuel shutoff solenoid. 
so that's an option too but if you don't have it it's not that difficult you can buy the other side of this connector aftermarket or you can put your own connector in however you want the relay is easy to come by and then the rest naturally your truck has a battery has ignition switch and all that so that's that focus the camera in there let that set for a few seconds so you can make notes or take a screenshot whatever you'd like to do So there you go. Pretty simple, but I have seen numerous times on the forum where people ask this question, how to wire this solenoid up, and people reached out to me in the comments before. Also, if you watch my video on the first fire up of the square body Cummins, throw a link up here for you, I explain this in detail and they'll show you how we wired it on the truck. Now, one question. Another viewer had reached out to me and requested to see a full video on how the square body truck is wired up for the Cummins. Is that something you'd like to see? If so, drop me a comment down below and let me know. In the meantime, like, comment, subscribe. That being said, get out there, wire up your solenoid, and get that project going. I'm Rico. I'll catch you later.